Greetings. In this lesson, we will create a basic butterfly. We will model, texture map, rig, and animate. Let's get started. We're in the Maya Classic workspace. Always a good idea for these introductory lessons to come down to your preferences shortcut and just make sure you're working in the default settings. And we are in the standard four view, perspective, side, front, and top. And we'll be starting in the top. So let's maximize that view by tapping the space bar. And then we'll come to View, Image Plane, Import Image. View, Image Plane, Import Image. Make sure you're in the top view. And we'll locate our reference and bring that in. Now, there's three things we want to do for our reference image. Uh, if you click off, you can just reselect it. In the channel box, down under shapes, you'll find alpha gain, and we'll reduce that to about 10% so that it doesn't interfere with the visual of our model. Secondly, we'll push it down a hair on the Y, again, so that it's not interfering with our model, which will be sitting on the ground plane. And then third and final, with it selected, come to new layer, and then we'll Double click that and just give it a quick title. And note, right, the V will hide and make visible. The third field out here, if I click it once, it templates it. And if I click it a second time, it references it, which means that I can't select it. And again, this just is helpful uh, so that it's not interfering with our model. I'll be selecting the model and I won't inadvertently select the reference. Don't forget uh, that when you have objects on a layer, you might have it referenced and then, and then be confused as to why you're unable to select it. Let's jump into the top view. Make sure you're in the top view. We'll come out to the poly shelf and we'll create a plane, just a basic plane. And this will be our wing here. And we're going to start very simply we want to start with the simplest topology possible and then we can subdivide it as we go. We'll also rotate this 45 degrees which uh, I have found is just helpful for introductory students to see where the vertices are going to go. We'll right click and choose vertex and I'm going to pick these three and just move them up here and then we'll pick these three and move them down here and then we'll stretch that out reminiscent a uh, little bit of a kite. So we'll uh, put that there and I'm just going to leave that there for a moment. We'll repeat. We could have duplicated uh, before we started manipulating, but it's good practice, I think. We'll go J key to 45 degrees. You can verify that in the channel box. And then once again, we'll grab the three vertexes here and we'll pull these out. We'll grab these and pull those, and then we'll uh, stretch it into that kind of kite-like shape. Now, as we proceed, I don't need this grid here until we get back to the center line, so I'm going to hide that. Uh, visually, it's interfering with my topology. And then we'll turn on wireframe, and we can see this. Now, what our goal is, we want this center line to match and flow through. So we'll begin to make that happen. These edges here will give us a little bit of that indentation. And this is our center line edge. So let's come back here and we'll pull this one out. And there's our center line. So we're meeting uh, about in the middle. We'll pull this one out and pull this one out. There's a gap here and we'll fill that with the bridge tool in just a moment. But let's just take a second to get our basic shape out here. We'll now open these up. And here, here is our basic. I would save at this point and increment and save. If you make a mistake upcoming, it's better to just to come back to this successful uh, plateau point. So don't forget to increment and save. With both of them selected, we're going to come into the modeling mode. They're both selected in object mode and we will say combine. So they're one piece but there's still this gap. We could 
uh, use the target weld to weld those vertex. But we're going to appreciate this little bit of extra geometry. It will help us with this indentation. And it will give us an attach point, uh, ultimately, for the body of the insect, of the butterfly. So we'll just grab these two edges, right? these two edges and these two edges, and we'll hit uh, Bridge. And there we have it. If you go into Object Mode and hit the 3 key, you can see that. And let's, before we subdivide it, let's just get it a little bit tighter on our reference image. And that, that's OK for now. Uh, I would increment and save at this point as well, because we're uh, going to go up and subdivide. So with it selected in object mode, we'll come up to mesh smooth, or obviously out on our modeling toolkit, we have uh, smooth. So we'll click that. And that just doubles the number of edges. And here is where you will spend a little bit of time really getting the shape right. Butterfly wings are very, um, people are very uh, familiar with the way that a butterfly wing looks. So unlike kind of other insects where you can get away not having uh, an exact version for this, people will recognize. A uh, couple of shortcuts here. I can go around on my outer vertexes using the arrow key. So if that is easier for you than making the selections, uh, you can do that. You can get around. And let's just look at the nice edge flow, right? So there is just the minimum amount of edges. They are flowing. There's a concentration where it is warranted here in order to get this indentation. But out here on the big uh, areas, right, there uh, aren't a lot of detail, and so there aren't a concentration of edges. So we would consider this to be uh, good edge flow. You certainly want to save this one, and we're going to take a uh, bit of a detour and paint this just right up here at the beginning. So take a moment, model that, and we'll be back. Okay, so you finished refining your model, you've saved it, and now we'll move on uh, and texture just this wing for our basic insect. Let's jump into the perspective view, and let's hide our reference image, and we can also hide our grid. We, uh, if we look at our model right now in the UV texture editor, we see those two planes and they're overlapping. If we were to paint now, we would get double painting on each of those sides and it would be very difficult. Uh, but for something like this, all we need is a straight planar projection. So we would be projecting straight down on the Y. We'll come to the modeling mode and we'll come out to UV and planar and we'll open the planar dialog box. Modeling mode, UV, planar dialog box and we'll choose the Y axis. This will project it straight down and we'll hit project and there you can see in your UV editor this is nice and flat and it's following the shape exactly and as we paint we'll get very predictable results. Uh, the one thing that I might want to do is just scale that down a hair and push it over. We will be creating a body and if we elect to attach and create a continuous surface, we're reserving some room for those other uh, shapes. If you were going to have double-sided wings, we'd want to reduce this even more. Remember that we want everything to fit in this one-to-one. -one. But for this simple one, we'll just create this wing, and we'll just get to painting directly on it. We'll come back to Object Mode, and we'll assign a shader. So I'll right-click. Right, that was the UV map. That is how the shader and how the texture will sit. But now we need to create the material itself. So we'll say assign new material. I'm in the object mode. I've right clicked, pulled down to assign new material. And we'll just choose a Lambert. We can change this later on to any of the other textures, to Arnold textures, uh, or Arnold shaders, I should say. But for now, we'll just start with the uh, basic Lambert.
Now I can see here I've forgotten to do one thing before we proceeded, and we can really see it if we come to the channel box. Here are uh, my history, and we'll uh, once you've finished a model and you've saved it, then you don't want to work as you as you move forward with shading and rigging and and lighting and everything else. You don't need the history on your model as long as you have it saved away. So we're going to come to delete by type history. And that just cleans it up. And now when I come to the attribute editor, right, I didn't have to go through all those tabs of history to find my shader. Let me just click off and right click, right? We said assign new material. Now if I want to get back there, I can right click and say material attributes. And as long as your attribute editor is open, you'll see that here. Now. Uh, if you were going to Photoshop, right, you could export that UV, open it in Photoshop, paint it in Photoshop, and you'd bring it back here into this channel. We're going to paint using Maya Paint Effects right, right inside the application. We'll come to Rendering, and we'll access our 3D Paint Tool. So we're going to open our 3D Paint Tool dialog box. And the first thing that we have to do is assign the texture. So we'll click Assign Texture. 2048 is a fair size, so we'll go with that. And now if you come back to your Lambert, you see that something is mapped in there. And so this is the file that the 3D Paint tool has just created when we hit Assign Edit Textures. And it's plugged into the color channel of our initial shader, which is this Lambert. And now we're free to paint. We probably want to flood this black, and then we'll come to our paint effects shortcut here, click on that, open the browser, and uh, you can use any of these, oils, markers, pastels, pins. Uh, I like the oils, and I'm going to grab this, and we'll just lay down some basic color, and uh, we'll just kind of fill this in and get kind of a painterly effect. The oil gray, you might think, well, aren't we painting orange? What's good about the oil texture gray is it's easy to change the color. So if we wanted to come and now paint a little bit of uh, orange with a little bit more predictable brush, we can do that. And I'm just gonna lay this out here and then come out with black. So I'll speed through this and um, see you in a moment. Okay, a uh, one other uh, area, the airbrush here, if you come and you can smear some of this together. So the smear color uh, allows you, well, that's giving us some green. That's changing our color. Let's see. Smear, try the basic smear. Let's see. Yeah, that's not changing our color. So I have a uh, smear mel selected. And we can kind of get a painterly effect for some of those rough strokes we had. So after you've painted some basics, you can come back with this smear. You can also use the highlight, or I think it's called whiten, let's see. Yes, we've got a uh, shadow. So if you wanted to just give it a little bit of oh, oops, color variation, and uh, if you wanted to do highlight, uh, that's a little harsh. Maybe if you went very small. All right, so you can play with smear, soft shadow, and whiten. And now I'll finish uh, by painting the little, little familiar uh, white And so there we go. Um, take a moment. That took about 
15, 20 minutes. Uh, spend at least that if you want to spend more really dialing that in. Uh, and then come back and we'll talk about modeling a very simple little body. Be right back. Okay, so you finished painting your wing. Let's select that as an object. Click New Layer. And we'll just hide this away while we work on the body. And we're going to create just a real simple uh, version of the body for the flying insect. We'll come back and create a second generation version where we work on the legs and antenna. And there will also be a third generation option uh, with very detailed rigging. But just for us to have this butterfly fly around, we can create a simple, uh, simple body. We'll start with a cube. And uh, we'll just work to a different scale and we'll make sure that they fit together when we're done modeling. We want to have two. We need one right down the middle so that we can cut it if we want to mirror. And then for our butterfly, we want a bottom where we can extrude legs out for that next generation version. And an upper half where we can connect the wing. Um, and then we also want uh, three subdivisions here. We're imagining that this is the um, central part of the body and we would extrude legs out from here. But just for now, uh, we've got that topology right and we'll just make a basic head and basic tail. If we hit the three key, we can see how that will smooth out. And so before we even get started, I'm gonna grab the four edges around. If I hit the, uh, excuse me, if I hit the four key, we can see that right up. Just got those edges. And we can scale these together in this direction and then down. So this gives us more of a cylinder, uh, right? The cube gives us a real basic starting point, And then we can um, get our basic topology correct and then subdivide. So the cube is, is always, a good, uh, always a good starting point. We can see that there. So this will be our central body part. We can come back later, extrude some legs out here, come back later and attach the wing. Again, for now, we're just going to create a basic head and a basic tail. We'll come to the modeling. I've got these front faces selected. We'll hit extrude and uh, world space cube and we'll scale those down. Right, so we'll give it a little bit of a neck. If you hit the three key, you can see that. We'll hit extrude and, and pull this out and um, pull it up and then extrude again. And we've got a basic, oops, we've got a basic head, uh, world space and cube and we'll scale that down and you can hit the three key. Uh, I got these edges close together here. Oh, looks like I've got a double extrusion. So I double extruded, I can see that clearly in the three and I'll just pull that, pull that out. So in the one, those were sitting. I'd done what I've warned you many times not to do, which is I extruded and then I failed to move it. Uh, but going back and forth between one and three as you work allows you to see that mistake and to correct it. If we wanted to delete this edge, this edge is fine. If we wanted to, I couldn't just hit delete. If I did that, the vertices would be left behind. So uh, whenever we're deleting an edge, we want to come up in the modeling mode and say uh, uh, edit mesh, delete edge vertex. And that will get rid of the edge and the vertex. So you see there's no vertexes uh, left behind. We'll come back and grab this, these faces. We'll hit extrude. Um, we'll pull those down. And let me show you just another method. We I've been extruding, scaling, extruding, scaling. You can extrude one long, right? And for the tail, we'll scale this down. You can add divisions, and then you could come back. I'll get one more. You can come back and double click the edge and then scale it. So a couple of different methods there. You can scale as you go, or you can just extrude out the full length and then um, extrude back come back and grab those edges and, and then scale them. Now, uh, for our tip, we generally don't want um, those flat faces. In fact, let me show you one other tool. I'm gonna grab these vertexes here and come to Edit Mesh, Average. 
So that will give us a little bit better uh, shape. And then we want a little bit of an end cap. So we'll just uh, hit extrude and scale out just a little bit. Now I scaled out, I want to scale down. So just to fine fine tune that at the end. Now this is, um, right, this is just a real basic one, but we could come in and fine tune it after the fact, right? Maybe it needs to be a little bit wider in that direction. Maybe that's a little bit large. Maybe you want to really distinguish uh, those body parts. You could lengthen, right, by grabbing the vertexes. Um, if the head was too long or too short, don't forget that you have soft select. We can tap the B key, hold down the B key to change the brush size, and you can get some uh, generalized uh, shape going on. In fact, I think that's a little too wide, so I'll just scale that uh, back to where it is. Now we're right. This is this is our basic first gen, and so just an extruded cube like this will be sufficient for this. The second one will build legs, antenna, and connect, actually connect the wings. And then, as I mentioned, there'll be an option for a third generation where we really do some significant modeling. And that would be appropriate for a real tight close-up. I'll mention here, uh, all three versions could be applicable to a project. If the insect is flying around at a distance, you wouldn't want to have a great detail modeled in. So we could, even though this is our, our first generation, real basic, we can still use it in a production uh, if we have the butterfly flying in a distance. Then that second gen uh, that actually has legs and antenna, that would be sufficient for maybe a medium shot. And then our third generation where we really are doing some fine modeling, that would be appropriate for uh, a close-up. And you wouldn't want to use that real high fidelity third generation for something that's flying at a distance. So even though we're going to move on, you can still use the basic, uh, the basic versions in a production. Now, we're not even going to connect the UV map. We're just going to leave these as separate shapes. Um, in the second gen, we'll, we'll actually bridge the wing uh, to the body. But for this one, we're just going to keep them separate so I don't have to worry about the UV map. And we're just going to assign a Lambert. Now, once again, I am reminded that I haven't deleted my history because I have a series of tabs here, which force me to have to click all the way out to find my shader. So what I want to do with this selected as an object is just delete the history. Now, you can save, increment and save. If you want to save a version of your model with all of the history intact, that's a great idea. Uh, but once you're done modeling, right, now we're moving on to shading, rigging, animating. Uh, I no longer need that modeling history, so we'll delete it. That cleans up my attribute editor. And now when I click the object, I can see at a glance here, here is my shader 3. And we're just going to make it black, right? Just a black butterfly, and this will fly at a distance. And you won't even really notice the butterfly has very thin legs and very thin antenna. So if it's flying at a distance, you won't notice uh, that we actually have it modeled legs and antenna on this one. Bring back our wing, hit the six key. This is at a different scale, which is very common. We're building these separate pieces, so we'll scale that down. Let's even bring back our reference. And if you wanted to get these pieces uh, at the exact proportion, you could do that, right? Let's say I want to do that now come in to this mode here and yeah so this head is a lot uh, right it has the eyes but we can just imagine that we'll scale that up a little bit to kind of fit that fit that big head the ne our neck is about right we can grab our tail and pull that back and it looks like the break is let's see about there so uh, you can use your reference to have that uh, have that work. So give that a shot. I'm going to hide my reference. We know we can get our wing onto the other side by selecting the wing, grouping it to itself, and then in the duplicate special dialog box, duplicate special, 
And the reason we grouped it, just as a reminder, it gives us a pivot right on the origin, right on the, the central line. I'll hit Reset Duplicate Special out of good habit. And uh, we're working across the x-axis. So this would be negative 1 on the x. And we'll hit Duplicate, and we've got it uh, on that other side. Now, we don't want to work with these in groups, so we can just immediately ungroup, right? We grouped as a temporary measure. So we'll come and ungroup. And if we look here, right, we've just got our body, uh, wing, and wing. And here we can create a, a simple rig. So take a moment, uh, finish your body. Uh, the one thing that you want to just make sure, um, let me, we've got a center line down the middle so that we can cut one side. We've got a center line here, and this is so that we can attach the wing up top, ultimately. And then we've got three faces here where we can extrude out some legs. So as long as you have that topology that started, uh, I believe, 2, 2, and 3, uh, you'll be in good shape to continue the project uh, on. All right, take a moment to finish that body. We'll come back and we'll rig it. Okay, so you finished your wing. We've grouped it, uh, duplicate with a negative one in the X scale. Uh, to get it onto the other side, we have our body. Uh, you'll want to label uh, our body mesh, our wing left mesh, and our wing right mesh. And we no longer need the image plane, so we can just delete that. And if we wanted to come and delete this layer, we could. And uh, let's rig. We're going, uh, again, these are separate pieces. Um, in a future version, a second generation, we will weld and bridge and create a singular piece that will have us uh, with an additional challenge of getting the UV map to work. Because these are just separate, right, we can just see that that's there and the UV is separate and this piece doesn't even really have a UV and it's all black and that's okay. So we'll have to tackle those in upcoming lessons as we learn to create a continuous surface version of the butterfly. But for now we're leaving the pieces uh, separate. Let's jump into the top view and um, we're going to go ahead and smooth these. So again if we hit the one key we see that's what it looks like. And for uh, a butterfly at a distance, that would be fine. And if you have a slower computer, you could actually leave it, uh, and that would be perfectly fine. But most computers these days can handle one subdivision, and so we'll hit smooth. And now that's uh, in the one mode. We see that's truly what it is, and that's what it will uh, render as. So I'm in the top view. I'm going to bring my grid back, and um, for your skeletons, it's important that your root be on the center line. And let's start with that joint. We'll come into rigging and we'll come to skeleton, create joints. Uh, we can open this and we're just going to lay down singular joints. You can hit reset, you could do it world, but since they're singular joints, uh, neither one would have a, an effect. We're going to lay out in world space. I'll hit the four key so we can see a little bit more clearly. Here's our center line. It's important that this uh, root joint be on the center line. I'll hold down the X key, which snaps us to the grid, and uh, I'll click. Now I'm going to actually move that up a little bit so that it is easier for us to see where we want our wing joint. But let's just verify this, and we can even uh, name as we go along. So let's call this our root. There's nothing there. There's just a single joint. And so let's, let's just practice and be clear as we go. I'll pick the body. The child is selected first. And you're typically, if you're out here, you're shift selecting the joint. If I'm doing it here in the outliner, I'd want to hold down the command key, which allows us to skip. If I held down the shift key, we'd get everything in between, right? So I'm selecting the body, which is the child. I'm going to command select the root joint. And we'll hit lowercase p or come up the long way. Edit parent, right? So uh, we can test that, right? We can see that body is there. And remember that once we have a rig, we're no longer selecting or affecting the geometry. We're grabbing the rig, in this case, our joint. And we can move that. And you see that the body moves. And we can rotate that. And that 
mesh is parented to the root. Okay, let's come back to the top view and we'll create our joint for our wing. We'll come to skeleton, create joint. If you wanted to get it exactly on the edge, you know that you could hold down the C key, right? So that's snapped there. And that would be a good place for the joint. So we'll snap it and leave it there. Now, when you're laying down joints, you'll oftentimes want to test. So I am going to parent the wing to the joint and test it. And then I'll need to unparent it so that I can mirror it onto the other side. We don't want to mirror joints with geometry either parented or bound. You're always mirroring joints with nothing associated with them. So just wanted to come through a, a pretty basic workflow, which is to test. So before I mirrored this, I would want to make sure that this was in the proper position. Uh, simple rig like this, it pretty much is, but we'll test it anyway. And again, we pick the wing. And uh, I haven't named this joint yet, but we'll command select that joint and we'll come to edit parent or lowercase p. And testing is pretty darn simple. We're just seeing that that rotates and it's rotating from about the pivot where we would like it to be. So that is good. So now in order to mirror this joint onto the other side, I don't want to mirror it with something parented or bound. So I'll select the child, in this case the geometry, the mesh, and we'll come to Edit Unparent, or Shift P, capital P, Unparent. And you see now they're not associated. So let's finish the chain. This is as simple as it could be. Right, this is our root here. This is our root joint. Now we have maintained this association. The body is still parented to the root joint because we're not mirroring the root joint. We're, we're mirroring the wing joint out here and we'll name those after the fact. So I've got my root here and here's my joint. We're going to parent joints to joints. And this, uh, for this introductory course, is confusing sometimes to students. You're parenting geometry to joints and you're parenting joints to joints. In this case we're going to pick the child first which is the wing. I'll shift select the root joint. Now note that the down uh, the downstream uh, child highlights to indicate a relationship. I wish it was a different color. It causes lots of confusion for introductory students. But have your outliner open, and you can see here at a glance, uh, you don't have the body selected. You have its parent selected, and it's highlighting to indicate that relationship. Um, so look here, and let, let's just do that again. I'm going to pick the child, which is, uh, in this case, joint one. I'm going to shift select the root. Don't want the highlighting uh, fool you. And then we're going to come to Edit Parent. And it created this little bone here. We can see that that bone here is the root. When we fly the root around, the subordinate child joint follows along. And now we can mirror this joint over. It wouldn't have been difficult just to create a separate joint on that same, but this is the standard workflow. And so we're, we're, we're executing the standard workflow in a very simple model, just so that you understand uh, the steps. And we'll come to Skeleton, Mirror, Joints. Uh, we can open the dialog box. This would be YZ. It's on the YZ. So I'll hit Mirror. Now um, we can parent. Uh, let's actually name. So let's call this uh, Wing Left Joint. And we'll call this one Wing uh, Right Joint. And we want to parent, right? We want to pick this child, shift select this parent, the joint, and lowercase p, or we'll hit edit parent. And we'll select this wing and lowercase p, excuse me, shift select the joints and lowercase p or edit parent. And we can test all together. We'll hit the six key here. A little bit hard to see the joints with all the black. We can see joints through there, and they're dark blue, hard, hard to see. So maybe selecting and then just coming back to the 6 key. So that wing works. I don't know if I pick out here. This wing works. 
And we can pick them both, which is convenient, and they rotate together. So give that a shot. Uh, we'll take a time out here for you to get to this point, and then in our final segment, we will animate this and have it follow a path. Be back in a second. Okay, so you have your rigged. Check this here. Root with two wing joints and the geometry parented. Make sure your rig looks like this. Save this as rigged unanimated. You always want to have a rigged unanimated version so that you can go back to it and create new animations. We're going to have we're going to animate the wings uh, fluttering, and then we'll have our character, our our butterfly in this instance, uh, follow a path, and we'll discuss path animation. Okay, let's set some animation on the wings first of all. Uh, easy to select here. I'll use my command key to to uh, skip select. And let's, let's bring them up, let's say 60 degrees. So I'm going to say 60 on the rotate Z. Let's also go to frame zero. And remember our three-step process for setting keys. We move in time. I've moved to frame zero. We manipulate the object. In this case, on the rotate Z, I've put in negative 60. And then we uh, set the key. So I will key it directly just to keep our graph editor clean because we're going to get into the graph editor. So I'll right click here and say key selected. So at frame zero, the wings are up at six, negative 60 on the rotate Z. Now a uh, 20 frame increment will be fine. So we could just skip and come to frame 20 and also set this. So move in time to frame 20, manipulate the object. We're leaving it at negative 60 and then we've right clicked and said key selected. Now we'll come back to 10, right, which will be the downward flap of the wing. We know that that would be 60 if we were doing it symmetrically, uh, and then we'll key that. Now I've got a lot of frames here, so if we wanted to see it loop just to kind of test the timing, we could come back and say in my range, in my time slider, range slider, let's make this zero to 20, and we can watch that. Now, this is playing every frame. Remember that we reset our default, and so the default is to play every frame. If you look at the timeline, that's playing as fast as your graphics card can go, but that's not the true timing. So let's open up our Running Man, uh, shortcut to the preferences. We're in the time slider, and we see their playback speed, play every frame. Let's go to the true frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. And now when we play, we're getting a much uh, closer to um, the actual playback. To have a, a very true sense, you would go to Windows Play Blast, and then that would give you a quick screen capture render, and you could see how this was going to play back. But a simple scene like this, this is about right, what you'd want. So uh, let's duplicate that. Um, uh, so that it uh, flaps forever. Let's say in the scene that we're creating this rig for, this butterfly is just fluttering around and the wings are going to be flapping uh, forever. Uh, I'm going to give myself 140 frames. Since we've got a 20 frame flap, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 1, 2. So that'll give us uh, that number. And that will be the total range around our, our motion path. So, uh, but if we were to play it now, right, we just see it flap once and then it's done. So let's set that to go on forever in the graph editor. I have my two joints selected, not the geometry. We're not selecting the geometry. We don't key the geometry. We've got the joints selected and we'll come to window animation editors, graph editor. And here is that wing flap. If we were to scrub through there, you can see that, right? There's negative 60, positive 60, negative 60 again. And so we can just have this loop on forever. We'll come to View, Infinity. And then we'll come to Keys, oh, excuse me, uh, Curves, Post Infinity, and we'll say Cycle. And if you zoom out, right, as far as you zoom out, you see that's going on forever. But more importantly, because we had 20 and we're going to render out 140 frames, right? we wanted to make sure that it's ending where it begins so that we get a nice loop. If we create that animated GIF, uh, that will loop nicely and we can 
test that it's looping, it's playing here, it's getting to the end, and as it comes back around, a, we have a seamless loop. Now, let's also animate the body. This will allow me to discuss uh, an additional transform node in a moment. We want this root, uh, let's say, for instance, that uh, we are going to have the butterfly kind of move up and down uh, as the wings flap. We'll key that directly on this root joint. So at zero, when the wings are up, we'll key it. We'll just hit uh, key and, in fact, uh, translate Y. So at frame zero, we're just going to say translate Y is zero, and we've right-clicked and keyed it. So we have one key so far. We know that that will be the same at 20, so we'll come to 20. Translate Y will be zero, and we'll key it. And then let's come to 10. When the wings are down, we can imagine that the, the um, butterfly maybe moves up a unit. And you may need to increase that value to really see it. But we can see now as the wing right, pushes down, the uh, overall rig, the body, is coming up. And that'll give that natural up and down that uh, butterflies uh, have. And we'll come and we'll set that, right? Because if we were to play now, it, it only does the first one and then it goes to stop. And you see what a difference that makes. That feels a lot more natural than when it's just stuck in one place. So we'll come to the graph editor and we'll just do the same thing. Infinity is already on. So we'll come to curves post infinity cycle. Now if we zoom out, you see that that up and down is going on forever. And we can press play. And there we have it. Uh, don't worry about the fact that this is displaying black. If we come and switch to Maya software and render, we'll see that the, the texture is actually underneath as well. So it's projected all the way through, although in our live view, we don't see it underneath. But right, if we render that, we can see. Now I don't have any lights, so um, it's a little bit hard to see, but that is rendering just fine on both sides. Okay, so we have this little, um, and, and this applies, right, to our walk cycles. We've done a in-place walk cycle, and we can then take that in-place walk cycle, or in this case, this in-place wing flap, and then we can apply a transform, transform node on top of that. We can key that transform node directly. We can apply it to a path, which is what we're about to do, uh, and you can even apply dynamics to it. So lots of times you will create some type of loopable action, create a transform node on top of that rig, and then control the overall transform. And we'll do that now. We'll just have this butterfly fly uh, in a circle. Let's bring back our grid, and uh, let's put this on a layer so that we can temporarily hide it. We are going to use the CV Curve tool to create a curve and then we'll apply the butterfly to that curve and it will follow it. So create curve tools, curve tool, CV curve tool, stands for control vertex. Uh, this is considered a NURBS curve, but we can apply uh, other things to it. And what's very important uh, when it comes to the CV curve tool, if we want the object that's going to be associated with it, to start straight and end straight, we have to grid snap the first two points and the last two points. That's the only thing that you really need to remember for this. So we'll start right where the butterfly already is at the origin. So I'm going to uh, grid snap, and let me just make sure I'm going the same direction as our butterfly. I'm gonna grid snap, and then uh, grid snap in line. Doesn't matter if it's one unit out or several units. These two just need to both be grid snapped. And now I can free draw. With the CV curve tool, it's not until you click the fourth time that you actually get the curve. But we'll draw this out here, and we'll draw it flat initially, and then I'll show you how we can come back and add a third dimension. But we'll come back around, and then we have to grid snap the final two vertexes. And the final one will be in the same place as the first one, right? Because we want this to loop. So I'll grid snap here. 
and then grid snap there. These, uh, I'll, I'll, we can hit return when we're done. We have this curve, and if we right click and come back to uh, right click to control vertex, we can see these here. These four, uh, I'm in soft select for some reason. I'll tap the B key to get out of that. These are in line. We, let's look at it in the uh, top view. Right, this is the first vertex and the last vertex. This is the second, right, it's grid snapped. And then this is second to last, or actually I'm going the wrong way. This is the second vertex, comes around. This is second to last. Let me just do that again real quick. It's, it's not difficult, but if you don't do that, it won't be a seamless loop. So once again, we'll come to CV Curve Tool. I've got my grid available. We're grid snapping here. Grid snapping, right? These are perfectly in line. And now we're free. Fourth vertex snap out generates the curve. And we'll create kind of a kidney bean shape. And then this is the important part. Uh, I'll undo that one. We want to grid snap. And then our final point is in the same exact spot as our first point grid snap and we'll hit enter when we're done right so now we have this seamless loop we'll bring back our butterfly and here is the real crux of this section of the rig I cannot uh, associate this node this root node to this curve because I have keys on it we animated the translate Y. When we give a node over to a path, the path is controlling all of the translate and all of the rotate. So a single node, this single node cannot have double inputs coming in to the Y, for instance. It, it can't have two inputs. So what we'll do is we'll give ourselves a new transform node and we'll associate that new transform node with the path leaving the root translate Y animation unaffected. So I've got my root here selected, and I'm going to come to Edit, Group. Now we've been grouping so that separate objects are um, all, all appear to be affected as a unit from a singular uh, pivot point. We've used Group to give ourselves a quick uh, central pivot so that we could negative X uh, translate uh, a scale, excuse me, across. But here we're using group um, in a third way and for the first time this semester to just give ourselves a blank transform node. So I'm going to say group. Now I'm going to shift hit the plus. You can see everything's still there. And I'm actually going to call this path uh, transform node. So this is, oops, if I could spell. Path transform node. All right. So uh, let's just review. We've got this butterfly. The wings are going forever. The root has Y translate up and down, right? It gives us a more natural um, animation. We want this butterfly to follow this path, right? In fact, I'm going to make this a little bit larger. We can just scale. I'm going to make that a little bit larger. And we're going to attach this node. Right? If I grab this node and move it, you see I could move it up there and we could press play and the animation would still be going. I could rotate it. Right? I've rotated it. Uh, let's even just some weird arbitrary rotation. That animation is still happening. This transform node sits on top of all that other action. And we can translate, rotate, or scale, right? We could scale it much larger, and it's still going to work. So we have a group transform node sitting on the top of our existing animated rig, and we can move it, rotate it, or scale it anywhere, and that animation is still contained. Uh, I'll undo that just to get back to where we were. And uh, we're going to attach this node to this path. Selection order is important. We want to pick the node that we're associating. 
shift select the curve and in the animation mode we'll come up to oh excuse me in the rigging mode we'll come to constrain motion path attach to motion path and we'll open the dialog box so it's the rigging mode constrain motion paths attached to motion path we picked our node first path transform node shift selected the curve and we're opening this dialog box now uh, in default it has the time slider which right now uh, got 140 frames so that would actually work but let's let's manually type it in All, almost always you're you're being a little bit more specific and in fact I have zero there so we'll say 0 to 140 0 to 140 and uh, I'm, I'm not gonna correct this because uh, uh, I just want to show you what will happen I'm gonna hit attach and it turns sideways if we play it right it's going around there but the computer doesn't know which way it was facing uh, we always want to model in positive Z, and it looks like uh, I realize now I, I modeled in negative Z. That just means we have to change, change the um, axis in the dialog box. I'll hit undo until that deselects, right? Undo until they're disassociated. So now if I press play, it's not following the path. So I'll come back to zero, and let's do this again. We're going to pick the path transform node shift select the curve in the rigging mode we'll come to constrain motion path attach to motion path and it was the z axis and uh, let me just do it I, i've got one more thing to do but let me let me hit it here and you see that it flips so now it's flying backwards because as i mentioned i didn't model z forward as i always encourage you to do i inadvertently modeled uh, negative z forward but I think that's helpful for us to see. So I'll hit undo until we get back, right? Uh, if I scrub through, it's no longer on the path. And third time's gonna be a charm. We'll pick this, shift select the curve, constrain motion path, attach to motion path. Z was the correct axis, but it flipped backwards. So we'll say inverse front. It's a little funny that we just don't put negative one in the field as we do in, in other dialog boxes, but you know, we're clicking this here. So the front axis is Z. We didn't model on the Z axis, but I modeled backwards. So we'll say inverse front. Now, if you'd modeled on the X axis, that would be X. If you modeled negative X, right, we'd say inverse front X. But I am facing the negative Z direction. Z, negative, and we'll hit it and now it works and I'll click off it and we have our butterfly uh, following that path couple of things we need to do before we're finished it starts and then slows down now if this was uh, if the animation was the insect still and then taking off to fly we might want that flat tangent but we're creating a loop right we want this perfect loop here so we don't want that acceleration and deceleration. So where do we fix that? Well, we know it's in the graph editor, but it is the path transform node that we want to select. And we'll open this, hit the F key if you don't see it. And what this represents is the overall path. This is one, that means 100%. So at frame zero, it's at 0% of the path. At frame 140, it's at 1 or 100% 1 uh, of the path. So we'll grab uh, these, and we know that we have linear tangent here. So we'll click linear tangent, and now it's just going to follow the path without acceleration or deceleration. And I'll click off it so we can see. Let's also get rid of the grid. And so now it's fluttering and it just picks up, doesn't slow down. So we have a we have a perfect loop. Now, as it pertains to our path, I said we have a couple of things. If we look at it from here, right, it, it turns a little quick. You might like that. Butterflies have a, have a funny kind of flight pattern, so that's not that's not terrible. 
uh, if we had like uh, an airplane, for instance, an airplane wouldn't turn that quickly. So we would want to soften this. And I wanted to demonstrate that we can come back after the fact, right click the curve, and we can actually make changes. Now you don't want to mess with these four keys, uh, excuse me, these four vertexes, right? The first two and the last two, leave those alone so that we have this seamless transition. But the other ones uh, we can uh, affect. So you could smooth that out or make it, right, we can make it real tight and this will probably not look, well, it's just a quick, it's a quick change. So you could smooth those out. Butterfly flies a little funny, so that's not a, a big deal. But what I did want to show you is that you can also, right, change the axis after the fact. So we can have it fly up and then down. And maybe over here it goes down so that we can have it come up. Just don't affect these, right? These one, two, and then the last ones. So the first two and the last two, leave, leave those alone. But you can play with uh, these other ones. So you can see our, and right, even as in real time, you can make that effect. So something like that, we'll, we'll turn on a resolution gate um, and we can put everything in there, try to get that to all. And you might want right a view so that it comes close to the camera so that the viewer can really see it there. Now we're not going to hardware render this. Uh, because with the hardware, uh, excuse me, we're not going to vector render it. We wouldn't see our texture. You could hardware render it. Um, but let's get into software as we approach the um, upcoming final projects. We want to talk about rendering. So get to this point. Um, definitely save it. And then um, I will go over in the final section um, rendering for this particular project. Okay. Questions uh, in the discussion. Have a good one.